If you don't like snakes, you're probably really hating these last few videos, I'm sorry. But today's video is yet another video about snakes. So this video, oh I forgot to, I forgot my opening, what am I talking about? Hey howdy hey guys, how you doing? How could I forget to say hi, I'm sorry, my bad. Anyway. This video is going to feature dead rats and dead mice, so if you can't handle those things, you probably don't want to watch this video. I'm not going to censor it, I'm not going to do anything, because snakes eat mice, it's what happens. You can't have a vegetarian snake just like you can't have a vegan fox. So what we're going to be doing today is feeding all of my snakes and showing you guys the different ways in which they all eat because they all have a little bit of a different personality when it comes to how they eat and what they are comfortable with. I do not feed live mice. One, in captivity, snakes often have a hard time hunting as efficiently as they do in the wild. So they strike and they miss a lot and it becomes a very stressful situation for not only the mouse that's about to be killed, but for the snake as well. Snakes actually don't hunt because they are having fun hunting. They hunt because they're hungry. So if they're able to eat without having the whole hunting part, you know, having to worry about that, that's all the less problem for them. So one, it's not only stressful for the snake and the mouse, but two, the mouse can end up harming the snake. If the snake bites the mouse improperly, doesn't strike it quick enough, takes too long, doesn't want to eat it immediately, the mouse can end up picking on the snake and end up hurting the snake. So I think it's best to feed frozen. That's what I do, that's what I do for all my snakes. I am trying my hardest to keep all my snakes on frozen food. So that's what I'm feeding. You're not gonna see any live mice being killed today. You're just gonna see a lot of already dead mice being eaten. So that's the video for today, and I hope you guys enjoy. Before the snake feeding starts, really quick, I do want to show you guys this awesome, amazing new merch I have for sale. I'll make this really quick, I promise. This is a Nala the Hedgehog plushie, My Little Baby Cheering Hedgehog. Has a cute little note on the back for everyone with little Nala cheering, and yeah, I haven't opened this yet. I was waiting until I did this little thing to open it. So this is the plushie. It's adorable. I love it so much. Even if no one else buys it, I'm going to be so happy with it because it's so freaking cute. It's my little baby Nala and she gets a little t-shirt. You could take the t-shirt off if you'd like. She doesn't have to wear it. I thought the little shirt was super cute. It made it unique in comparison to other he stuffed hedgehogs that are out there. I've been working on this for so long and I've been just so excited to get it out. So I'm so happy it's finally here. Anyway, I'm going to shut up now. I hope you guys enjoy the video, but if you want to check this out, the link is in the description. Okay, bye! Okay, so first up, we're gonna start with Celia. Celia eats in her enclosure. There has been no aggression issues whatsoever with her eating in her enclosure. I've never had problems with that correlating the way that she tolerates me putting my hand in the cage. She never strikes. She knows that I am not food. I've never had any issues with cage aggression with feeding her in her enclosure. Actually, when I first got her, I was newer to owning snakes, so I tried taking her out and doing the method where you feed them in a box, but she actually wouldn't eat when I did that. It made her more stressed to be moved around during feeding time, so instead we just keep her in her enclosure. Now all I do is I put it in front of her and I wiggle it. Oh, she missed. There we go. He's close to shedding and it won't focus and anyway, he's so close to shedding that he will not be eating today. I can already tell 
that if I were to offer him anything, he will strike at it in attack mode, but not try to eat it. Yeah, see, he just was like, get it away from me, basically, so. He doesn't want to eat, and I'm not gonna bother him about that. Now this lighting is gonna be kind of weird for a second, but Maui is one who is starting to show very bad cage aggression. He's the only snake I have that's doing this, but because of this, I'm gonna start trying to feed him outside of his enclosure so he stops associating my hand going in there with him eating, you know, being fed. So clearly, it can definitely go both ways with snakes. Snakes can either get more stressed out by you moving them, or they can end up getting really bad tank aggression. I do believe it depends on your snake personally and your preference, and I don't think there's any right or wrong when it comes to it. Hey Maui, how you doing? How you doing, bud? I'm going to lift this up. He's gonna go in a little shoe box. So he eats rats, so here he is. Just gonna try to put that in there. There we go, perfect. Now we leave him alone. Next up, we have Violet, who's back here in her humid hide. She actually looks like she's about to shed, so she may or may not eat. Now we do have a situation here with Violet where I have to brain the mouth, which is very gross. Basically, I have to cut open its head and have its brain hang out. So to spare you guys from that, I'm not gonna film this part. I'm sure it's already hard enough to look at these dead mice, let alone watch me cut its head open. Next up we have Salem. Gucci here, let's see if I can find her. She looks like she just recently shed. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and feed her a mouse. There we go, now she got it. Now Toast eats two pinky mice and I have to brain them, so I am not gonna show you this part. He has moved on to baby mouse number two. Now for Tate, Tater Tot ate not even a week ago, so he's probably not gonna eat. I did brain this one. I haven't taken the brain fully out, but I've opened his uh, scalp. You just can't see it from here and I don't really wanna show you. So here I have a juice that's basically gonna act as kind of like a perfume almost and I'm going to be putting it on this mouse. Because in the wild, most ball pythons eat African soft fur rats. So they're going to get the scent of the African soft fur and it's gonna make them feel more comfortable eating this white little mouse instead. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Probably don't have to use as much, but Tate is such a picky eater that I am really trying my hardest here. And then we're gonna let it sit for a minute and then we're gonna feed him. Then we have my little corn snake here who doesn't really have an official name. We just call him Lego. We haven't really named him yet. But he likes to eat in the dark and he eats a mouse. There we go. This is Frank. Frank likes to give us a hard time with eating. He does like to bite cameras though. That's so sweet. It's so weird because he's very, um, he's a very picky eater, but he does like to strike at every other thing other than the dead mice. He's super pretty. A lot of you guys don't know him yet. He's a paradox, so he has some, don't bite me. I'm just trying to point at you, buddy. Stop it. Now Frank likes to be left alone. He does not like to eat in front of me, so I literally have to close his box. And... But I'm gonna go ahead and leave him alone in there and I will get him out later after he eats. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so much. And I will see you guys or you'll see me next time. Make sure to get your tickets for Playlist Live if you can. I will be going to Playlist Live Orlando on April 29th. And I will be doing a panel there where I talk about animals. So check it out. Go look for tickets or something. Okay, thank you guys. Bye. Another snake video. What am I doing? I need to sleep. Okay. <laughs>